Christ, the Lord, Lutheran Church, and, and I'm going to start there's something that I think is funny. You'll think it's funny, but about the people that meet over in our education uh, building. Um, one of the people from AA said to me, I saw that sign out there. Why do you have on there that Russians are coming? So I went back to the office and I said, what is, why do we have a sign about the Russians coming? I did not know it was the name of your movie. <laughs> I straightened out and I went back and ran in there and I told him, there's a movie coming. It's called The Russians Are Coming. So, but I thought of it this morning when I saw all the Nebraskans here. You ought to be concerned the Nebraskans are coming. <laughs> I want that whole pew to stand up. The Nebraskans are coming. <laughs> Thank you. You want to? You're up now. Introduce them. I think that's important. Thank you, Tom. Oh. Anyway, I know we have a lot of Nebraskans here, and like I said, be careful. <laughs> and a reason I like to welcome the visitors and have them stand up is that we love. To visit with our new visitors. So, are there any other people that are visiting this morning? All right. And where are you from? Uh, All right. Well, you're in the Midwest. Welcome. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Pardon? Little Rock, Arkansas. Yay. All right. So nice. And I know we have a few announcements before. Oh, some more? Oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to start singing the Nebraska song. <laughs> Wonderful. We have quite a few announcements. What? Thank you. <laughs> I was going to do it, but you beat me to it, so go ahead. <laughs> okay, who was going to do some announcements? People talk to me when I'm coming in, so I say, come on up. Good morning. Good morning. Maya Angelou wrote, music was my refuge. I could crawl into the space between the notes and curl my back to loneliness. Despite being famous, Maya experienced loneliness, and I'm sure you're aware of how pervasive loneliness is in our world. For its third annual mini-conference, the Northeast Valley Consortium of Lutheran Churches, our planning team recognized the need to address loneliness with the Christian community. The outcome of our discussions on loneliness is a timely presentation called Loneliness, How to Live and Serve Faithfully to Those Within Our Community. The speaker of the day will be the Reverend Dr. Wyndham Hughes, Associate Vice President for the Mission and Identity from California Lutheran University. We hope you'll mark your calendars today and save April 13th from 1 to 4, and it will be at Living Water Lutheran Church, and you will be getting an email with all the details and a link to the registration form, and we ask that you do that by April 5th. It's soon. Get busy when you get the email. Thank you. Thank you very much. And while she's walking up, I'll tell you, we've started printing these off, and they're back on a little stand, a music stand back there, but it does have some of the announcements on it, because this congregation is the most active congregation I've ever seen, and if I stood up here and told you all the announcements, I wouldn't have time for a sermon. <laughs> so one of the reasons that we're so active is we are addressing loneliness, but we're also addressing homelessness, 
and our population here today is diminished because quite a few of our congregation are down at Grace Lutheran serving the homeless breakfast. So in case you're wondering, where is everybody? That's where they are. Um, but I have a different announcement. On Friday, March 15th, at 12.01 a.m., the new Christ the Lord Lutheran Church website will go live. Somehow I feel like I'm having another baby. <laughs> but it has several purposes. First, to attract new attendees and members, to more accurately reflect our unique character of friendliness and welcoming, to make it easier for our own congregation to get to know all the things that are going on, and there's so many, to also help you get involved in more things, and ideally help us attract a new pastor. There will be some website guides on the um, counter in the narthex as you leave. Please take just one per family, uh, but you won't really need a guide, but just in case you do, those are printed out for you in the narthex. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. Anybody else? I have to say when she talks about your new pastor, I'm excited about that, but I'm also has mi have mixed feelings because then I will be going away. But I said I still want to come back if you'll let me. Spice hiking, don't forget to let me know when you're going to hike, okay? <laughs> okay, anybody else have anything? Uh, we have that clothesline out there, and it'd be nice if some of you would take some more of those cards because we're on our way to matching Fountain Hills for the $2,500. I think we're halfway there. So that's so that we can buy the stove or pay for it. It's already been bought to take to um, the shelter for legal asylum over in Mexico. And I believe that's going to be delivered on the 23rd. I'm sure it is. Because I wanted to go, but I can't go. It's during Holy Week. Okay, anything else before we um, settle down? Oh, if you want to bring anything for the soup supper, I noticed some people have pretty much signed up to bring soup. I think there might be some spaces for dessert. And, oh, they're so good. <laughs> anyway, we do have devotions and uh, soup supper on Wednesday night. And I want to give you a little heads up. I'm kind of trying to plant the seed for something for Holy Week, and this is something you have not done, uh, at least not for a long time, if ever. Uh, foot washing on Monday, Thursday. So it isn't mandatory, but I will be up here. Jesus humbly washed the disciples' feet, and that's what we'll be doing. And so I suggest if you want your feet washed, you might want to wear sandals or come barefooted. I don't care. But I'm going to quickly tell you a story about that. I was, well, I can't now. We're, too, we're running out of time. I'll tell my stories later. So anyway, thank you for being here, and I'm going to sit down and be quiet.
please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for sins only you know. Forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. O oh God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your life, that all our deeds may reflect your love. 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. Good morning. This morning's reading comes to us from the 21st chapter of the book of Numbers, beginning with the fourth verse. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? for there's no food, no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many of those Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to John, the third chapter. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Again, I want to welcome all of you here this morning, and it was interesting how many people have been talking to me about their devotions. I even was handed a devotion book this morning to look at, and I am so glad that that Lenten challenge came from the Synod to read a devotion every day. I didn't even know how many I was reading yesterday. I thought I'd better check these out. I had 20 of them, and I read them every day, and I love them. My sister keeps sending me more, and I said, you know, I, I, I got quite a few now. And I love it. And yesterday morning, I read one of my favorite authors, and you know who that is, Pastor Steve Holm from Spirit of the Desert, and I was all set to read that to you. Because I think some of you have enjoyed that, and some of you come up and ask for copies, and I have copies today if you want one. But anyway, I got up this morning, and lo and behold, there was one that I thought was even better. So that's one I'm going to read, okay? Okay. I uh, have it here somewhere, right here. Okay. He chose John chapter 3, verses 18 through 21. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. John was no fool. By the time he wrote his gospel, the message of Jesus' death and resurrection had been spreading for at least a couple of generations. There were now believers in every major city in the Roman Empire, but not everyone who received the message of grace believed it. And John believed that he knew why. Even though the light had come into the world, some people loved darkness better than light. It was the best way to keep their evil ways hidden. What John observed is still present among us. Millions of people have received the good news of Jesus with thanksgiving, and his light burns brightly among them. But others continue to live in darkness, presumably because it's more comfortable for them. They sense that to believe in Jesus will mean change. And when the old ways are so comfortable, why would they bother? It's not that unbelievers are bad people, not at all. Many of us count them among our family and friends. And because they too have been created in the image of God, they will, by nature, do good. But living in darkness can be a precarious business. Stumbling blocks abound, and it's so easy to get lost. And often their basic goodness is hidden. When we love the light, our lives are enriched, and the world is blessed. His thought for the day. What changes when we believe in Jesus. What changes for you? I have people come up to me and say, you know, I don't know if I believe. I I doubt. And so I love it when I can respond in a way that they can see the light. And that doesn't happen overnight for many people. Nicodemus and the Hebrews lived in darkness. They had been deceiving themselves with idolatry and resolutions to obey God's commandments only to backslide 
when they left, when they were left to their own devices. They acted like self-centered, narcissistic, manipulative people. The journey of these Hebrews and Nicodemus depicts a journey of slavery through the desert toward freedom. Many people do not believe in God and would rather live in darkness and to cling to their earthly bondage. And I think every one of us probably can relate to that at some time of our life. To live more in darkness is similar to not believing. The Hebrews and Nicodemus were living in the darkness as they grumbled and became impatient and doubted. They even complained about the kind of food they were having to eat. Hold on to the and the result until Nicodemus of the world, the Hebrews have a hard time letting go. And you hear me mention often what happens in that education building. Those are people that have struggled with their lives for a long, long time. And if you've never been to an open AA or al meeting, I would suggest to, to visit one. I always say it's so similar to the Ten Commandments, the steps of Alcoholics Anonymous that were written many, many years ago. It is amazing to me to hear the stories of the people that have been transformed because they made a decision to live in the light rather than in the darkness. And if any of you have ever been involved with family members or friends that have been caused by addictions, either dying or having a miserable life and miserable people as a result of it around them, Think about where you are today. Is there anything you need to let go? Do you need to do an inventory of how you're living? Because we're not here to condemn anybody. We're here to look into our souls and say, what is going on with you? This morning as I was walking the labyrinth, something special happened as I was finishing up. I went there and somebody was walking it already, so I decided to walk the paths of silence and I came back and And I think it was his first time to walk because he ended up in the center twice, which is fine. Anyway, I kind of stepped back and said, you know, I didn't talk, I just went like that. And he smiled, touched my hand, and it felt like a touch of the Holy Spirit. A, a small kindness that we can do when we walk out that door is so important in our universe, especially in a world that is before us if we turn on the TV. And it isn't always a pretty world. So I want you to think about your life. We need to let go and admit the idea of powerlessness without God in our lives. Our text today teaches us that without God, we are incompetent as we try to live life our way instead of the way of Jesus and the teachings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We need to welcome the God who rescues us from all our sins and be reborn every day as we take our inventory and confess our sins and accept forgiveness. You may think being reborn is like speaking in tongues and being slain in the spirit. That's one way, I guess. I've been to services like that. But we are reborn every day spiritually when we turn our life over to the care of God. And I pray each of us today can feel that rebirth in our lives. And as we do this 40, 40, 40, 40 challenge, the devotions help us. Decluttering our lives. What a, what a blessing that is and have a discipline in your life. What do you need? We were talking a little bit before, some of us, about our eating. 
I lose all discipline when I walk into that room, I can tell you. Otherwise, not too bad. And we're being asked to donate at least $40 a dollar a day to help feed the hungry. And we have so many. I don't see anybody in here that I think is probably homeless or hungry. We need to invite them. Invite them into our midst. Like the Hebrews and Nicodemus, we can be healed of our old patterns of living in darkness. And maybe we need to depend on one another once in a while and, and share, you know, I'm struggling with this. I don't know how to do, I don't, you know, maybe this person has had that experience. So we mean to be gentle and kind with ourselves, not live with all this guilt and regret. Stay in today and be grateful because in the Gospel of John it refers to the scripture passage quoted in today's first reading from Numbers. And I don't know if you noticed, if you read the bulletin carefully, Sue does a great job of putting things in the bulletin. There's, a, there's an introduction. Now, she doesn't create it herself, I hate to say, but she has a thing she gets it off of. And Sue, I gotta tell you, I work, as you know, all week getting ready for this message. And I couldn't, I didn't see it until this morning. I thought, oh, Sue has a typo in there typo and I went to Mary Sue and then I went back to my office and I realized she didn't have a typo right in the beginning of your bulletin it says the fourth of the Old Testament promises providing a baptismal lent, lens this lent well a fourth of it if a fourth of it's dedicated to that it must be pretty important right so Sue you're right on again and my mind was out there somewhere but anyway um, those who look at the bronze serpent that Moses raised will live. Jesus says that he will be lifted up on the cross like the serpent. And that cross becomes the sign that we look at all over in here. I'm wearing a cross. Many of you are wearing a cross. It reminds us to look to it in faith. In faith for healing of restored relationships to God. For hope not only in living, but in dying. And I can tell you, my days of being a hospice chaplain and being an ordained pastor, thank you, God, I've never been with somebody that was screaming and yelling, don't, don't take me, Lord. They are accepting in a faithful way that this isn't the end. There is life after death. So I pray that we can be hopeful today and in the days to come. And just as we heard in the psalm that was so beautifully sung, Jesus delivers us from distress by his death and resurrection. And we hear John 3.16. Many of us have that memorized since we were this little. And we remember it and know that God is not against us. God is for us. Praise God for that. Because we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we believe he died and rose again, we can be reborn and transformed lives over and over. It's not a one-time thing. It is a constant. Oh, it's something that's really a struggle for you. Turn it over. Turn it over to God. It takes place in our hearts and our souls. And as Nicodemus and the Hebrews were transformed at the point where I didn't know this before this week. I missed this somewhere along the line. I, I love the ministry, and one of the reasons I love it so much is every day I'm searching the scriptures, trying to find little gems that I've never seen before. And this was one of them. That Nicodemus was transformed to the point where he provided expensive spices for the burial of Jesus. Now, you may have known that, and maybe I knew it and forgot it. But what will we do today that will give witness, that will give witness to our faith in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ? What will we do when we walk out of this church today? I hope you have the opportunity to reach out. Maybe it's just with a smile. Maybe it is
like the man did on the labyrinth this morning. Share, as we said last week as we were going our way. Go in peace and share the bread. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as we continue our Lenten journey, help us to be vigilant in living a life following you wherever you lead us. Help us to believe and to not live in the darkness, but to live in your light. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand as you are able. And now let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, only Son our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead on the third day and into heaven, seated at the right the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Trusting, trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Gracious God, your love unites. Give vision to the global church and foster cooperation and mission. Increase inter-religious understanding and ecumenical dialogue. Make your church a sanctuary for all fleeing persecution, disaster, and war. 
Hear us, O oh God. Creating God, your love enlivens, restores balance to the earth's fragile habitats. Preserve wilderness lands, rainforest, and wildlife. Cleanse oceans and rivers. Make us good stewards of the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Righteous God, your love liberates. We give thanks for those who courageously witness to your liberating love, especially Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth, renewers of society, whom we commemorate today. Free all people from the evils of racism, religious strife, and hatred. Hear us, O oh God. Merciful God, your love heals. Care tenderly for all whose loved ones perished from pandemic disease in every nation. Strengthen health care workers, first responders, and caregivers. Relieve all who live with chronic illness and pain. Hear us, O God. Incarnate God, your love enlightens. Open our hearts and minds to fresh understandings of our faith. Deepen our love for you and for one another. Teach us to pray for our enemies. Hear us, O oh God. Amen. Abiding God, your love serves those who died in the faith, are made alive in Christ. We give thanks for your promise that we also be raised to newness of life. And at this time, Lord, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we raise our voices who we would like to have prayed for today. We pray for all those who are being closed, held close in the hearts of all of us. We pray those prayers daily, and Lord, we pray for those who are traveling, that they would have safe travels. Hear us, O oh God. Amen. Accompany all of us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Please be seated as we share from our abundance.
Let us pray. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, given for you for the forgiveness of your sin. And we thank God for that. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And together we share in praying the prayer our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated in all are welcome at the Lord's table. And if you want gluten-free, there's some in this middle dish. Just point to it, and it is yours. So come. The table is ready.
Please stand. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you today and always. Amen. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Share your bread.